Hey everyone, what's up? I'm Matt. Welcome to Rocky's War Room. I uh, <clears throat> haven't done a video in a while. Um, I didn't do a video update last week because uh, I had taken a break from my AWI, uh, my American War of Independence miniatures, uh, to do some uh, American Civil War in 28. Um, I know you guys have seen uh, one unboxing of the Battle in the Box. Uh, I've actually got two more videos um, of unboxings, the American, <clears throat> uh, the Union Infantry Box, and the Confederate Infantry Box. Uh, you should be able to find those in the uh, AC ACW Challenge um, playlist, so check those out. Um, I actually, uh, la past couple weeks, have been working on these Union Soldiers. And then uh, I finished another one this this past week, uh, another one of these bases this past week. So I decided, you know what, I want to do some terrain. So I'm sick and tired of bear table, fighting on either side. So I did these two pieces over the weekend. Uh, I have three pieces, uh, three bases that uh, uh, I was currently working on. Um, and I have hunted down and found me the ramshackle barn which uh comes from the same series as the farmhouse and the church so uh the ramshackle barn has been purchased and it is in the mail so <laughs> uh that's redendra and that's uh that's where these kits came from the this uh church here the fencing the picket fencing and the farmhouse those are all redendra uh i got I, that's where i got those from but uh as you can see uh this is what i've been working on my American Civil War. Let's see if it'll focus on it. Sure it will, eventually. There we go. This is the command base of my first Union Brigade. There's the little drummer boy, or drummer guy. <laughs> they never make a, a little drummer boy, you know. Quick look at that. I finished his base. Did these are the Perry flags, <clears throat> and they're very rough, hard, heavy paper. So when you're soaking these in the glue, you actually got to give them a little bit more time than you would with any other kind of like regular paper, because, whew, it takes them a little while to be pliable and uh, to be able to bend these. So just uh, remember that if you're you're going to be doing that. So this is the command base right here. <clears throat> this here is uh, another uh, base of regulars, just regular troops. There we go. And uh, the base I finished last week, and I still have to flock it and uh, paint the ring around the bottom and I still have to finish the flocking, and as you can tell, there's a big difference between the two. <laughs> Got a little work to do on this guy, so um, there they are. The backs of them there. So I'm enjoying the heck out of painting these parries. Matter of fact, uh. I'm pretty enthusiastic about uh, Perry miniatures. <clears throat> um, after I got them, I looked at them. They're a little bit different. They're set up a little bit different in their box. You know, they're a little bit different, uh, a little bit thicker of a model, um, I guess you can say, than most Warlord. Uh, like Warlord and War Games Factory miniatures are a little bit thinner, a little bit skinnier. But man, do I love the sculpts. Uh, do I, I just like the way they put together all around, all in all, uh, I'm in love with Perry miniatures. Uh, I really like them. Um, I'm going to be more buying more and more Perry miniatures in the future. <clears throat> As a ma matter of fact, don't tell anybody, but, uh, I picked up two boxes of Knights, uh, from, uh, the War of the Roses, um, from Perry miniatures, uh, last week. So, <clears throat> but that's for a future project. Um, as a true war gamer, I always, I, I have like a thousand projects at once. <clears throat> I actually, uh, if you can see it over here, Altar of, Altar of Freedom is a uh, 10 millimeter, 6 millimeter game that I've been getting into. I got me some uh, 10 millimeter Old Glory 
uh, ACW miniatures so I can do the big large Gettysburg do the whole battle and then with these 28s I can do one section of the battlefield itself but uh, <clears throat> alter freedom of the rules I'm going to use for my my 10 millimeter uh, which I, ha I do have a video on my 10 millimeter unboxing some old glory 10 millimeter uh, miniatures uh, look for that in my playlists also for altar of freedom like I was getting to um, they use static bases and the static bases are 30 by 60 millimeter and this is one brigade so all my 10 mils are going to be broken up into two 30 millimeter um, bases put together and as you can see from this they have an order of battle this is uh, in the game this is their firepower this is the uh, Jackson is the name of the brigade or the uh, NCO that's leading brigade and it tells you it's under Withers division so I made these cardboard cutouts to do practice games with uh, with Altar of Freedom um, and it's a fun game uh, I can't wait to be uh, to put that on the table with the uh, miniatures itself so uh, lots of things to be excited about now I uh, <clears throat> on uh, Saturday I believe it was um, yeah because Friday night I finished these right here but on Saturday night I uh, got a wild hair got a wild itching to do some terrain uh, they've been sitting around here for a while the church and the farmhouse and you know trees for my forest so uh, I decided to get some you know dollar clipboards from Walmart that's what those ba these bases are right here and is a uh, dollar clipboard and I sanded down the edges with the circular sander worked out really well took no time at all and uh, made three bases my church base my farmhouse base <clears throat> in my woods this is gonna be woods I got the tree stumps glued I'm probably gonna put one here 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 and here as well but you will be able to pull them out of their little spot here so they can walk through the woods um, I'm definitely gonna put more trees on here than just four um, the apertures that I see over there um, I tested them out and there's enough room to get you know more trees in here so I'm going to do that just to make more of a dynamic piece of uh, terrain <clears throat> so this here is a farmhouse that can be used from 1700s to uh, to the 1900s um, the picket fence comes from the church kit and I wanted to spread it out between the church and this farmhouse to kind of tell a story um, I glued it to the base I glued the fence together to the base I dry brushed uh, I, 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 I painted it uh, like a dark gray color and dry brushed white and uh, whether the little house left the gate open um, this is not a finished piece um, I just have you know a few bushes on here um, I have uh, as you can see a stack of firewood out back there some dead trees here uh, they got knocked down in a storm you know just kind of tell a story and I started working my way around the outside of the fence I'm gonna do little spots of shrubs all the way around there <clears throat> so here's the back uh, I have a fallen down limb here and some flowers and some nice uh, cluster cluster foliage to make bushes with um, it's turning out nicely I'm actually gonna keep and continue and have a little path in the back here I think if it's supposed to go into the woods you know uh, I'll bring this out to about this far and have a little walking path right here. I think that'll be kind of neat coming from the back door into the woods. So, but it tells a story. Um, that's almost finished. I still got some uh, flocking to do, um, some tall grass, uh, things like that. And this here is my, obviously my church. Um, <laughs> as you can see, I have some freshly buried fellas right here. That I'm gonna put uh, wooden crosses uh, right there and you know of course flock this like I flock that right there and uh, we'll put some uh, um, a nice couple trees 
probably over here, you know, with some bushes and, 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 and things like that to where you could still walk a piece across the board. You know, I'll leave a gap for these uh, miniatures to get through. Kind of rough ground right there. And uh, give you a close-up of the church. Here. There we go. I think it came out pretty good. It's even got a swinging bell up there, if you can see it. Nice little wooden church. That's actually on the box, it says 1750 to modern day. So I could really use this for anything, really. So, there you have it. I'm working on these three. We're going to get this one finished probably this weekend, the, uh, the farmhouse. I have another farmhouse, but I think what I'm going to do, because you get two of them, one from the battle in the box, I'm probably going to uh, make it a smaller building or maybe just keep the same farmhouse, just do it a little bit differently, um, paint it a little bit differently instead of whitewash it, maybe do something different. Um, <clears throat> but like I showed you here also, I'm working on this right here. This is... It's going to be a, a woods or a wooded area. Um, I'll show you here. You know the apertures. And they'll just... I'll drill these out as best I can so they come on and off real easy. But there's room. There's definitely room. Especially after you bend these and add bushes and things like that. You know, and you can pull them out walk your bases through, put them back in, that sort of thing. It's probably not the easiest way to do it. If there's anybody else that knows a better way, I'm all ears. <laughs> I also picked up something really cool uh, from the hobby store. These are fruit trees and fallen fruit. There's a super orange and, and deep red, uh, like a reddish orange here, almost like a scarlet for like oranges. And these would be apples. I thought that was the neatest thing I ever saw. So we're going to make a maybe an orange and uh, apple orchard of some kind. <clears throat> Since those did exist at a peach orchard, you know, things like that uh, back in the uh, Civil War era. So uh, <clears throat> other than that, uh, these can be used also for my AWI as well. So, you know, they're multi-purpose terrain. Um, obviously, it's 28 millimeter. Uh, the 10 millimeter stuff uh, is going to be so ridiculously easy to do. You just get the really small trees um, from the hobby store, or heck, you can just get the apertures and turn them upside down and glue a bunch of those uh, cluster clumps to the top of it and just remove it from the table. I mean, they're so small for 10 millimeter, it's ridiculous. So, uh, oh, I also got, if you remember these. From the Perry Battle in the Box, these uh, fences. I haven't painted them up, but we're gonna we're gonna get a base for them, um, and put them on a base so they'll stay put, uh, and we can just set them out. I'll probably do six at a time since I have so much. So, so that's my update. There, 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 there it is. <laughs> Um, not much else going on other than, uh, I got the 10 millimeter stuff. Uh, I got a, a, a rule book called Rally Around the Flag, which is an old rule set, but I am going to do a, uh, book review on, uh, on that rule set to kind of let you guys know what it's like. And, uh, if you already know, that's fine, <laughs> but, uh, um, maybe introduce somebody else to uh, an older set of rules that they could use even now. So... Maybe bring back memories for some people. But uh, anyway, that's all. That's all I have. Uh, please like like this video if you liked it. Uh, uh, please share it with a friend. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And uh, please leave me some comments. Uh, all comments are welcome. I'm not scared. Don't worry about it. I'm not scared at all. Just, uh, you know, hit me with it. Constructive criticism. Even if it's not, not constructive criticism, I take it as constructive criticism. So uh, anyway, from... Uh, me to you. Ta-ta.